Hello, how are you today? My name is Otto and welcome to the channel. This video is about how to set up your new DJI Mini 3 Pro. So I'll be talking about how to set up the drone and the controller. There are two different controllers and we're going to be taking a look at the two of them. And last but not least, we're also going to be taking a look at the DJI Fly app. I'll try not to make this video too long, so let's not waste any more time. Inside the box, we have the DJI Mini 3 Pro. It comes with a gimbal protector and it comes with a battery already inside the drone. You can buy this drone with the RC-N1 remote control, which is this one, or you can buy it with the DJI RC, which is the new controller that has a built-in screen and it already comes with the DJI Fly app pre-installed, so you don't have to attach your smartphone anywhere. There is no power adapter or a power brick included to charge the battery, so I usually use a quick charger that I have for my Samsung smartphone, but most chargers should be fine. Inside this box, we do get the USB-C cable to charge the Mini 3 and the controller, a full set of propellers, and a small screwdriver and spare screws in case you need to change the propellers. The RCN1 controller will come with a cable to connect to an iPhone and two additional cables for phones that use a micro USB connector or a USB-C connector. The first thing to do is to charge the Mini 3 Pro battery with a USB-C cable. And to do so, we're going to plug this in on the USB-C port on the back of the Mini 3. There are four lights at the top of the drone and they will blink when it's charging and all four lights will stay solid when it's fully charged. If you need to remove the battery, press these buttons on the sides at the same time and put the battery backwards. To insert the battery, just push it all the way in until you hear a click. This button here is the power button. You can quickly check the battery power when the drone is off by pressing it once and each light represents around 25% of battery power. Insert the micro SD card on the back of the drone right here and push it all the way in until you hear a click. Unfold the front and the rear arms like this and just a quick note, you can start with the front ones or the rear ones, there is no specific order to do this. Now we're going to remove the gimbal cover, you have to pull this tab over here and then just pull away the cover. Now remove this piece of foam that is behind the camera, but I recommend that you keep this and use it when you need to place the cover back on. To place the cover back on, insert the foam behind the camera so it stops moving, and then place the cover like this, starting at the front, and then securing this part at the bottom. A good tip to remember is to never turn the drone on when the gimbal cover is on. To install an ND filter, you need to hold the camera and twist the lens cover counterclockwise to remove it. Now place the ND filter and twist it clockwise until it is aligned. These are from the brand Freewell and I have been using this brand for my main cameras, my other drones and the quality is great and the value that you get is amazing without being overpriced. The basic kit is under $50 and you get 6 different ND filters. I don't think the ND4 or the ND8 are too useful for me, but the ND16, the 32 and 64 are great and the ND1000 might be helpful for long exposure photography. They also have this other ND set with polarization to reduce glare from the water, the sky or buildings. I'll put the link down below on the video description and on the comment section as well. On the controller, there are two sticks at the bottom or at the back of the controller, depending on which one you have. Remove the control sticks and screw them on the controller. 
charge either controller, you need to use a power brick and a USB-C cable. Connect the cable on the USB-C port at the bottom of the controller and the lights on the controller will start blinking when it's charging and they will turn off completely when they are fully charged. If you have the RC in one controller, to open the phone holder, you need to pull it upward. There is a cable inside and you need to pull the plug on the left side. This one over here. This cable will let you connect the controller to an iPhone. If this is not the right connector for your smartphone, you have to change this cable by removing the other end and replace it with the correct cable. There is a small mark on one of the plugs, so you need to pay attention to this when you change the cable. Place the smartphone with the charging port to the right side and then connect the cable to the phone. On your smartphone, make sure to download the DJI Fly app from the App Store if you're using an iPhone. And if you're using an Android device, you need to go to the DJI website and download the app directly from there. To turn on the controller, quick press and then press and hold the power button until it turns on like this. Now let's do the same with the Mini 3. The power button is this one at the top of the drone. Quick press and then press and hold the button until it turns on. When it's time to turn off the controller or the drone, it's the same process. You have to quick press and then press and hold until it turns off like this. The first time you connect the drone, there is going to be an activation screen. So you need to agree to their terms and then you need to register with your email address. There is probably going to be a firmware update, so make sure to download and install all of them. Let's take a look at the controller. We already know that this one here is a power button and in the middle we have this switch with three flight modes. In the middle we have the normal mode which is the default flying mode. If you move the switch to the right side it will go into a sport mode and the drone will fly faster and it will be more responsive to your movements. All the way to the left we have seating mode and this will make the drone fly slower, but it will help to get the steadier shots when making a video. This button on the left is going to initiate the RTH or return to home. To activate it, you need to press and hold it until you hear and see the confirmation that the drone is coming back to the home point. This button is also used to stop an action that the drone is doing, for example, a master shot, a quick shot, or even the return to home. At the back of the controller, we have two buttons called C1 and C2. The default use for C1 is to reposition the camera and C2 will switch the camera from horizontal to vertical mode or vice versa. But both of these buttons are customizable on the menu. At the top of the controller, the left button will start or stop recording a video and the button on the right side will take a picture. You can half press this button so the camera can grab focus on a subject and then press all the way down to take a picture. Up here, we also have this dial on the left side and this will control the tilt of the camera and the dial on the right side will allow you to zoom in or to zoom out. So the front of the RC N1 is the same as the DJI RC where we have the power button, the fly mode switch and the RTH button. On this corner on the left side, we have a function button that you can single press or double press. 
It is customizable on the menus where you can select what you want it to do. On this corner on the right side, this button will switch from video mode to photo mode and vice versa. On the top of the controller, the button on the right side will take a picture or it will start or stop recording a video depending if you are on video or picture mode. And on the left side, we have this wheel that will control the tilt of the camera. Now, let's take a quick look at the controller sticks, but the first thing to know is that if you don't move the sticks at all, the Mini 3 is just going to hover and this is good to remember, especially if you're new to drones, because sometimes when someone is about to get in trouble, for example, if the drone is about to crash, people tend to panic and that usually makes the person move the sticks all over the place to try to avoid the crash, but most of the time, it's better to just let go of the sticks. If you push the left stick up, the drone is going to ascend. And if you pull it down, it's going to descend. Now, if you push it to the left, it's going to rotate counterclockwise. And if you push it to the right side, it's going to rotate clockwise. On the right stick, if you push it up, it will fly forward. And if you pull it back, it will fly backward. Pushing it to the left is going to make the drone slide towards the left like this and if you push it to the right, it's going to slide to the right like this. The app is going to show us what the camera is looking at and there's a lot of information that is being shown to us at the same time. The app is also going to allow us to change most of the settings for the drone, so let's start on the left side. If you press this icon over here, the drone is going to get ready to take off and then you have to press and hold this circle to confirm takeoff. When you do that, the drone is going to start the motors and it will ascend to about 1.2 meters and hover. If the drone is flying, this same button will start the RTH which is the return to home function and once it returns, it will start landing automatically. The other way to take off is by using the controller and to do so, you push both sticks to the bottom and to the inner corner at the same time, just like this. That action is going to start the motors, but the Mini 3 will not ascend. So at that point, you need to push the left stick forward to gain altitude. To land manually without the app, you have to hold down the left stick and the drone will start to descend and then it will land slowly. If you press the map icon, it will open the app on the lower corner where you can see the drone position and orientation. And if you tap the map, it will change to a full screen map. Tap again to go back to the camera view. And you can also switch from the map to a compass by tapping this corner and tap it again to go back to the map. To minimize the map, Tap on this corner of the map. Over here we have the information of the current height and the distance of the drone and also the current speed. Here at the bottom right side, we're going to select the storage. And here we can select the resolution and the frame rate that we want to use. To the right, we can also select the exposure compensation. And all the way to the right, we can choose the camera mode if we want it to be auto or pro mode. If you select pro mode, there are going to be two sections. On the right side, you can change the shutter speed and the ISO. On the left section, it will open this submenu where you can select the white balance, the resolution, the frame rate, and you can set the color profile, the coding, and video format that you want to use without even going into the menus. Up here, we can see the battery level of the drone. The 42 represents the percentage of the battery remaining, and these numbers over here is going to represent the remaining flight time. Right now it's zero because it's not flying, but if you're flying, that's what those numbers mean. Next to the battery power is the signal strength between the controller and the drone, and this icon shows the status of the sensors. And the next icon displays the current GPS signal strength. 
Before you take off, make sure that this icon turns green, which means that your position is locked by the GPS and you will also get a confirmation that your home point has been updated. Here on the right side at the bottom, we have the playback button. In the middle, we have the shutter button to start recording or to take a picture. This button over here will let you select the shooting mode. And the main modes are photo mode, video mode, master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, and panorama shots. Selecting one of these modes will let you select more options. For example, if you're on video mode, you can select normal or a slow motion. This icon with a 1.0x is the zoom controller, so you can press it to change the zoom quickly, or you can press and hold it and it will open a zoom slider. Below the zoom button, AF is for autofocus, so you can autofocus by selecting your subject on the screen. If you tap the AF, it's going to change to MF, which is manual focus. On manual focus, you need to press and hold the MF, and with this slider, you can manually focus. The icon at the top of the zoom will rotate the camera from horizontal to vertical and vice versa. On the main screen, we can select a subject by drawing a box on it and it will start tracking it. To cancel the active tracking, you can press the small X on the corner of the green box. Up here on this corner, we have these three dots and here you can access the main settings. We have multiple settings here, but the main ones are safety, control, and camera. Under the safety tab, the obstacle avoidance action will determine what happens when the drone finds an obstacle. The options are to bypass the obstacle, to break, or to turn this feature off. If you select to bypass, you need to turn this feature off. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to fly to the left or the right side. Here, you can select settings like the maximum altitude, the maximum distance, and the auto return to home altitude. It's always a good idea to check this altitude if you're flying on a different location and set this altitude higher than the highest obstacle around your flight zone, which could be a tree, a building, etc. Down here, you can manually calibrate the compass and the IMU. And all the way down here on advanced safety settings, we can select what the drone will do if the signal is lost with your controller. The options are return to home, descend, or hover, but I highly recommend to select return to home. On the control tab, we can select the gimbal mode to follow or FPV. Here we can set the gimbal values and we can also perform a gimbal calibration. Down here, you can customize some of the buttons on the controller. You can customize the ones that are at the back of the controller. You can customize the right dial and you can also change the function when you press the C1 or the C2 button and rotate the right dial at the same time. On the menu of the RC-N1 controller, we can turn on or off this option to charge the phone with the controller. And here we can customize the function button and select what it does if you press it once or if you press it twice. On the camera tab, we can select the video format to MP4 or MOV. We can select the color profile to normal or DC like which is a flat color profile. We can select the coding to H264 or 265, select settings like the histogram, overexposure warning, grid lines, the white balance, and here we can select the memory that we want to use. And also from here, we can format the micro SD card. On the DJI RC, you can swipe down once and you will see the current time and the battery remaining on the controller. If you swipe down twice, it will open this menu where you can turn on or off the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth. If you insert the microSD card at the bottom of the controller, you can also take a screenshot here or start and stop recording your screen. These two bars at the bottom will let you set the brightness and the volume of the controller. There are a few ways to transfer your videos or pictures from the Mini 3 Pro but I don't want to make this video any longer. So the way I prefer to do this is to remove the micro SD card from the Mini 3, 
and then insert the memory on one of these SD card adapters so I can read and transfer the files directly to my PC. And for me, this is easier to organize, edit, and backup if I need to. That was a lot of information for sure, but I'm hoping that this was useful for you. I'll be making more videos for the Mini 3 Pro, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. My name is Otto, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.